So our special guest today is Edmund Stone. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, as my bio says, uh, I am uh, an author and a part-time boat captain. So, <laughs> which uh, it, that's just mostly a recreational thing. I just like to boat. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I, um, I have um, as of well, it'll be as of October twenty-sixth. Uh, as soon as the pre-order is done, uh, I'll have seven books under my name. Yeah. Um, I'll have um, I have three in a trilogy and another that just came out recently within a three part horror. I've had the first sequel from that one. Um, but uh, I'm an author and I live in a little town called Garrison, Kentucky, which is right on the Ohio River. <clears throat> and uh, our actually our house, uh, we, we sit right on the river so you could walk out our back door and just about go over to the beach. So but I, but I post a lot of stuff about it because I just really love that area. Yeah. And uh, we yeah, and we've always my wife and I've always wanted a house there. We finally got one. We we're just like, you know, anchored down now. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, but that's lovely though. Just just being brought there on the beach. But that's fantastic. Oh, yeah. Absolutely love it. Um, I um, I've been a writer since about 2016. I mean, that's when I, I started becoming serious about it. Um, I've always written one way or another for years and years, uh, but um, started becoming serious in about 2016 uh, when I joined a uh, writers group online. Um, got some good tips and information and stuff. <clears throat> Uh, then decided in, well, I, I started uh, uh, putting things out there for like um, like anthologies and uh, some poetry, short stories, things like that. Yeah. Uh, around 2017. Uh, then after that, it just, uh, you know, the, the, the ultimate goal was to, to release a novel someday. Uh, finally got around to that in about 2021. So my first uh, novel was released, uh, Tent Revival. And uh, I, that's the one with the trilogy. So I have uh, two more that uh, were launched from that the following year. Yeah. So tell us about your books without giving away any of the spoilers. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, probably my nearest and dearest to heart would be uh, Tent Revival <clears throat> because it, it basically is about a small town and this ancient evil that's underneath the ground in, a, in an old mine there. Mm -hmm. The mine is supposed to be abandoned, but <clears throat> things are going on down there. and People know things happen. You know, there's been odd occurrences for years around that area. And um, a, uh, a creature by the name of Rebecca lives down there. Well, Rebecca is more or less a um, <clears throat> kind of like a vampire kind of thing, but she's not really a vampire. Yeah. <clears throat> she um, she basically um, sucks the souls of people by eating their hearts. And when she does, they become part of her hive. She has a huge hive of people and she calls them the mixed parts. And they're just they're just they just swirl above her in a, in a room usually. And they all will come together when she needs them to to go and do whatever bidding she needs. Um, she has three or four generals that follow her all the way. One called Sage, one called Samson, and what uh, is happening in Tent Revival, <clears throat> she comes out of nowhere and tries to uh, turn one of the the like sons of the town. He's a, he's very well known, him and his dad, and she tries to take him into her hive. Yeah. Well, the dad won't have it. He finds out, he figures out what's going on. So the dad is kind of like the hero in the book, and his name is Cy Sutton, and he's just a real down-to-earth, <clears throat> simple man who um, who loves his family and wants to do the best for him. So he's the only one that's really seeing what's going on in the town while the rest of the town's being uh, basically uh, pulled into Rebecca's allure. He sees what's going on. So he's the one that's out there trying to fight it. And that's the way the story goes. And it's uh, it, it becomes, it, it gets really crazy because it becomes a <clears throat> like it, it builds and builds. And then at the end of this week that they're going through, this big tent revival comes up. And that's when it gets really crazy. And all the people of the town are being sucked into the tent and everything's just going wild. And the mixed parts are involved. And it um, it, it really comes to a, a, a big party. Uh, and it, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> pretty bloody too. But <laughs> 
Isn't uh, all horror books supposed to be a little bit crazy and a little bit bloody? <laughs> Uh, that book is uh, one of my most popular books. That one and uh, Within, but um, <clears throat> but Tent Revival still remains to be a pretty popular book. A lot of people like it. Good. So, what's inspired you to write in the horror genre? <clears throat> oh, that's a good one. Um, well, long, long, long time ago, uh, I was. Uh, I, I never really like growing up. I never really liked horror that much. It was more sci science fiction for me. Um, and then at some point there, um, I I kind of what I, I was curious about you know a horror movie or two and like oh what's that all about and some friends of mine said and I, I was like oh I just don't think I can watch it you know I was, I was just one of those kind of kids that freaked me out and finally when I was about twelve years old I watched um, John Carpenter's The Thing. Yeah, watched it all the way through, and uh, after that, I mean, I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is great!" You know, and it had it had like a science fiction uh, part to it and everything, and <clears throat> then I just really hooked me. And then it was aliens and a lot of different things like that. Um, but um, that got that hooked me, and then from that point on, um, I, I started reading horror. And uh, then, then I, I, at first, I, I wasn't a real avid reader. I was mostly like comic books back in those days. But um, I started getting into reading horror, and I started with like Poe at Ground Poe because uh, I liked his poems and his short stories and all that. They were very dark and just brooding, just right down my alley. Yeah. Uh, kind of like me as kind of like me as a teenager. It worked well. <laughs> <laughs> so um, after that. Um, I, I started trying Stephen King. Well, I, I just couldn't get the, I didn't have the attention. Uh, well, for one thing, I have attention deficit disorder. So I was unable to get the attention to stay through one of his full novels. It was just impossible for me. So yeah. what I did is, um, <clears throat> so what I did is I, I started with, you know, some of his short stories. I liked them. They were pretty good. And then along came, uh, somebody introduced me to uh, the Books of Blood by Clive Barker. And oh my gosh, I just I fell in love, fell in love with it. I read them all, every every volume, just loved them. And uh, then then I was hooked. You know, I was reading Clive Barker like crazy. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, right, yeah. I mean, he's just he was my favorite. But um, for years, I uh, I read that, and I, I would read a, a horror novel here and there. Um, like, and then I eventually got into Stephen King. But as a, as older, as I got older. Um, cause Stephen King, you know, as a, as a, a youngster, Stephen King didn't really, like I said, you know, it was just hard for me to hold, hard to hold my attention. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, as I got older, then it became more, oh yeah, I really like this. And, uh, so now I've read it and I've read several of the, uh, you know, the stand, several of the big ones that <clears throat> really enjoyed it. Uh, but I had to grow into that for sure. <laughs> um, but, uh, but reading horror for me, um, it, it's been like I said over the years. It's been off and on. Uh, I love it and always have, but I always mixed it in with like some fantasy and sci-fi in between there, uh, until I became uh, an actual writer. And when I became a writer, I thought at first I thought I would give like some fantasy kind of stuff a try, yeah. and I tried it, and it it was okay. I mean, I didn't really think my stories had anything to them. They just didn't feel right. And I couldn't really figure out what it was, but I just didn't. I was just like, yeah, let's get frustrated. And I was like, gosh, I just don't even know. Um, <clears throat> then in that writer's group, a friend of mine, uh, you all may know him, I'm sure, uh, Justin Boot. Have you heard of him before? Yeah. Okay. Well, Justin told me, he said that we, we were friends in that writer. We were both in the same writer's group, so we were friends. And uh, Justin was like, have you ever tried horror? Because he was writing horror. That's all he wrote. And I said, I mean, a long time ago, uh, years ago, I might have written some short stories in college and stuff. <clears throat> and he was like, well, give it a try and see what you think. And I did. And the very first short story I ever wrote, horror wise, and the very first poem I ever, I was like, oh my gosh, why was I, why did I not do this? I mean, it's just like I fell in love with it all over again. And yeah. it pulled me right in. And then, then as I was writing, I was like, yeah, this is, this is what I need to write. Um, it, it just, the, the words came out better. It made more sense to me. Uh, everything was real visceral, and it just it came alive right off the page that way. So uh, definitely, I was hooked to kind of more or less a, re a resurgence of what I was, you know, like 10, 15 years before that. So it was kind of yeah. good. It was interesting. 
<laughs> yeah, I think um, if you haven't found the genre that you like writing in and find that you're most comfortable in, you will never get settled writing something yeah. else. <laughs> and I'm always coming up with ideas too with that. And it's just, all, all, my ideas always go to the dark side and I just love it. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you come up with your dark and airy scenes? Oh gosh, <laughs> lots of ways. Um, dreams, uh, I've had uh, at least, um, oh gosh, probably... I mean, well, uh, the, well um, the the Rebecca Mythos series, the, the Tent Revival and the One and Lost Hope, those basically came from um, the, 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 remember I told you about the mixed parts in there? Yeah. Well, um, I was, uh, I, wor I work as an occupational therapy assistant also during the day. And I was walking by the central supply office and they had a, 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 a box out there and it had a tag on the side and it said mixed parts. And uh, I was thinking, I was like, huh, wouldn't that be interesting to think that, you know, that whole box is full of mixed body parts? And then it just went from there. <laughs> just started doing that. And I wrote a short story called Mixed Parts, which was about that. Uh, then it went from that to um, the whole um, tip revival started from there. Um, a friend of mine I knew, uh, he went by his last name, uh, or well, his name, he, he went by Sage. That, that was kind of like his nickname i guess her name and yeah. when i heard that name i was like oh that would be awesome a sage with like a preacher or that kind of, that's what i was thinking so i went with that and then that that started tent revival and then uh samson came out of that too uh from another friend of mine who was a, a fairly large guy and i just thought he would be perfect in my book and so i started <laughs> from there and then, then they all it just started started going and yeah, that's just my mind started going different directions and i came up with it um rebecca's kind of a um i, I that always came I, I kind of came from my uh, love for hp uh, lovecraft and cthulhu uh because she has like tentacles that crow out of her side and different things and they have a lot of uh, little teeth and stuff that bite and chomp and everything so i just um <clears throat> that kind of came from that uh that inspiration. Uh, I love H.P. Lovecraft. That's another one I love. I forgot to mention him. So, uh, but yeah, definitely uh, came from that. Um, but it, dreams are probably, I, I've had several dreams where I've uh, written short stories and things from. Uh, I've got several that are like uh, on uh, the side that I've, um, that I basically have a rough draft that came from just a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm still working on those though. Um, I've got one right now. <clears throat> uh, it's I'm revising it as as we speak, but it's a uh, it's a ninety one thousand uh, pay or uh, word document right now, and it came from a nightmare I had about a theme park that was overrun by giants and uh, and like uh, zombie zombified dead animals, and that's where that dream came from. So then I started from there and I uh, I turned it into a novel. <laughs> Okay, so how do you have nightmares about a theme park with giant zombies and other things? <laughs> I have no idea. No idea where that came from. Um, the only thing I can think is I might have had a cold that night or something. I, I was probably hopped up on cold medicine or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, ju we'll just go with that excuse. <laughs> yeah, right. It was it was a great dream though. I can remember waking up and and looking and thinking, "Oh my gosh!" And I was like, "I gotta write that down." So I grabbed my phone. I just started typing that out. It was just as fast as I could type it. Ninety-one thousand uh, words later. <laughs> and there we are, right? Ninety-one thousand later. Uh, but I couldn't believe it came from that. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I get ideas there. Um, this um, my current. Um, book I have out now um, within a three-part horror um, I um, I give like in the introduction of that I talk about um, one of my uh, where the idea for the first story came from <clears throat> um, my daughter lives in a farm way out in the middle of nowhere and uh, it's it's real like at night you can hear coyotes uh, howling in the hills behind it and you know things like that so it's it's very remote um, one day I was out there and I, I had to uh, drop something off to her and um, I was leaving and I, I heard uh, the her bloodhound howling 
and I heard a few other things around there and I got to thinking, I said, Oh my gosh, what would it be like if like, you know, if she were out here alone and a serial killer came in and what would she do? And she has a shotgun. I mean, what would she do? And I just went, it just started barreling out of control from there. And I wrote the whole story. And then when I told her about it, she's like, dad, you're scaring the crap out of me. <laughs> I was like, well, please don't ever read that story. Huh? <laughs> That's nice. That's brilliant. Yeah, so, it, was, it was pretty cool. That's where that came from. Just, <laughs> that was in the moment. That's where that came from. Uh, the other two in there, I honestly don't even know. I, I, one of them was uh, it, the one the one that um, it's called Hurt. And it's, are you familiar with Within? No. The current one? Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'll have to, I'll show you, I'll send you a link to it, or you can find it online, maybe put it up on there or something. But yeah. anyway, it's my, my, my recent book, uh, Within the Three-Part Horror. And um, <clears throat> the second story, there's three stories in it. The first one was one I was just talking about. And the second story in that is a, a witch story, and it's called Hurt. <laughs> well, I, I always watched, uh, Amer I watched American Horror Story Coven, and I was always fascinated by the character Queenie in that, where she could cut herself and project it on people, like a transference kind of thing. Yeah. And um, that fascinated me. And I was like, you know, out of all the powers they all have, that is the coolest one, in my opinion. That is so cool. And uh, I started from there, and I, I created a character who who has a lot of pain in her life from mental illness. Um, she like has a borderline personality disorder <clears throat> and uh, it quickly became a theme for the whole thing. Uh, the witches that are in there, they have powers, but they manifest their power from their pain and their pain comes from a lot of times from their mental illness and stuff. So every single witch has uh, some form of mental illness and they manifest their powers from that. Uh, the key is to use them both together to help, um, you know, get your to, to increase your power to make uh, things better. Um, and they also have they, they every one of them has that that dark or that that hurt, but they also have the ability to heal. <clears throat> so they can also turn it around and heal others. Uh, so and and every witch has that inherent ability. Plus they have another power on top of that. Yeah. But that all came from just that you know that particular power. Uh, whenever I thought about the cutting, I thought about. Uh, borderline personality disorder because that's you know that's what a lot of people with that do they cut themselves to relieve stress and to help their um, uh, anxiety so i just put it into the theme of that and it just started going from there um i, I explore adhd i explore depression lots of different things in there um, and and it all it, it's you know I, I did that and then the story harper the the new story punish which is the sequel to that um, in that one, I, uh, I, I further explore it and I get into like a, a commune where there's, uh, other witches there and the, and the, uh, one of the main witches explains why, you know, what, why their, the powers manifest the way they do and why it uh, helps to try to, uh, bring the two together instead of trying to separate them, the, the middle illness and the power. Um, so I explore a lot of those themes in there and, um, uh, this morning, I had a uh, on uh, Books of Horror on Facebook. I had a, 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 a early reader comment on that, and she just she nailed it. I mean, perfect. I was like, yes, that's that's what I'm after right there. <laughs> so, <laughs> it feels so good when a reader just gets it, you know. And it's just like, wow, you know, you're just like your thoughts are there, but you're just hoping somebody gets it, and she got it. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so. <laughs> What's the most challenging aspect of writing for you? <laughs> Sitting down and doing it. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, actually, I'm, I can I can do that, but I have I have a tendency to, especially right now, there's so much going on marketing wise that I tend to get mixed up in that. Um, if I can go in, I get up early in the mornings when I do my writing. I do it usually uh, crack it on like four o'clock in the morning. But um, I get up and I start writing. If what I try to do is as soon as I get up, I go straight into my computer and I sit down. And I just start, you know, I just go through and I try and do two hours straight uh, the best I can. <clears throat> and uh, I always shoot for a word count. Most usually I get it, but not always. Uh, I always shoot for like 2000 words a day. Most of the time I get it. Uh, sometimes I have to play catch up through the week. 
Um, but um, if I'm revising, then it's more like, uh, you know, I, I go by like chapters. I might do two or three chapters a week or maybe four, if, depending on how big the chapters are. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but um, the hardest part is just getting up and, and going straight in there and doing it. Uh, if I pick up my phone, then it's over. <laughs> I try to like not pick up my phone. I just leave it over there on the thing and I walk in there and I know my wife sometimes she'll be like, um, I texted you, why didn't you answer? And I said, Because my phone's right there beside you. <laughs> I didn't even pick it up today. And she's like, Oh my God. She's like, I should have known. But um but that's the probably the hardest aspect is to juggle all of it. Um you know, writing used to be my one thing, but now that I've uh, I've got so many books out there and all the marketing that goes along with it and the promotion and all that, it's just it gets pretty trying, and uh, you you end up uh, you know doing more of that, and then you then you realize you know oh my gosh I I need about five hundred more words today. Okay, I got to put everything away and just get to it. You know, <laughs> so that's yeah. probably the biggest challenge right there. And I would say most writers would definitely say the same thing. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of writers say about time as well. They don't mm -hmm. they just don't have the time sometimes to actually sit down and do it. And regarding yeah. marketing, yep. that's the hardest and, uh, thing, isn't it, about always. writing? And I beat myself up too, probably way too much, but I do. That's just me. Yeah. I hate on myself if I don't get it. I, say, I, I tell myself bad things and I shouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, do you ever scare yourself with anything that you write? Oh, there's a good one. Um, <clears throat> I have. Uh, I'm trying to think of the one <laughs> that way. Um, I, I mean, well, uh, within the, the very first one, when I wrote it, that kind of scared me a little bit because, I, I, like I said, I kept thinking of my daughter and I thought, oh my gosh, what am I doing here? <laughs> that was a little scary. <clears throat> um, I don't know. I mean, there's some. And, well, the the one I'm uh, the one I was telling you about earlier about the theme park. Um, I'm actually right now attentively. It's called uh, Menagerie Park, and um, it it scared me in a couple. There there was one scene uh, like this underground scene where these creatures come out, and it was kind of freaky. <laughs> I can't I have to admit, it kind of scared me a little bit. I was like, wow, this is cool. <laughs> But it, but me being scared is like being scared in a, a cool, creepy way. It's like it's like I think, oh, this has such a creepy vibe. And you know, when I when I think that, it's not not really that I'm I'm fearful or anything. It's just more that I just like that creepy vibe. And if I feel that's coming out in it, then I think it's definitely working. Yeah, uh, I always try. To, I always try to go for creepy and dark the best I can because uh, I, in my opinion, <clears throat> I mean, I know me as a as a reader, that's what I like. So I know as a writer, I want to definitely try to purvey the uh, same thing. And I know, you know, I hear so many people talk about, oh, it was so creepy. It was so creepy. So apparently, you know, everyone else likes that, too. So <laughs> it's always good to have that creepiness in there, um, whether you get all the, you know, whether you get all the blood in there or not, as long as it's creepy. So there's there's been stuff I've read that had hardly any bloodshed at all, but it was so creepy. I was like freaked out. So I know that that's a. That's definitely a great thing to <laughs> add to your book. <laughs> so have you written anything that you've thought you've gone too far with? Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, maybe. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I don't think, and, and personally, I don't think I went too far. Uh, my, my current book is, um, it has a lot of, um, <clears throat> hang on a second. I don't know what's going on here. I got a, I got a uh, call. No way. It'll go away. Anyway, um, so um, probably um, I uh, probably um, in within there was a prison scene in there that was kind of uh, it, it was kind of it, it it was it was extreme in a in a in a kind of a sexual brutal way, and it kind of made it hard it was hard for me to write it was one of those that i tried to write it and i wrote it a couple of times and i said well i mean i know that's what it should be yeah. but for me it was like it just didn't hold true so i had to have someone look at that scene and give me some tips and stuff and somebody who knows a little more about extreme writing and they were able to get through it and I, it worked out better um, but uh, at first it just didn't seem 
right to me. It just seemed weird. So I had to work on that. Um, probably the most extreme I've ever gone on, on the sexual side of things. Uh, typically, I stay pretty much to the middle road. I mean, I, I have sex in my novels, but it's never anything real like like you would see, like the whips and the chains and all that stuff coming out. Yeah. Um, mostly my, my novels are like, uh, like I said, dark and creepy and uh, lots of blood and good stuff like that. That's what I usually tend to, because I, I can write that. that. That works better for me. So probably that scene was, it was a prison, like I said, it was a prison rape scene. It was kind of hard for me to write that. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but, you know, that's probably the only one that I can think of that would uh, jump out at me, really. Are there any memorable reactions from readers that stand out to you? Mm -hmm. The one I got today was a good one. Um, <laughs> um, I've, um, I mean, uh, like the the when when a reader, like I was saying earlier, when a reader gets it, you know, gets the story and understands that 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 just really uh, gets to me good. Uh, when I get a new reader, uh, somebody who um, says, "Well, I'll take a chance on his work, check it out." And then they just give me a glowing, oh, it's so good. And it had this and had that, you know, and, and it's when I feel like, um, well, that book is just kind of done what it's going to do. It's over. And then you get this whole new batch of readers come in and they just love it. And they just tell you all these great things. And it's like, wow, I don't know, maybe I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, I think, I think like any writer, you're your own worst critic. I mean, that's just the way that works. And yeah. you'll, you'll think that something is not very good but then the next thing you know you'll find an audience for it and people love it so it's kind of hard to uh, judge that sometimes um but as far as like reviews and things go i mean i love them all i mean even the bad ones i mean i get a few bad ones here and there but and when i do i just i'm like okay well i get it <laughs> and just go on <laughs> i mean i've even had had some of those reviews that they say oh, it just wasn't my thing two two stars for now. <laughs> Well, if it wasn't your thing, it doesn't even make any sense. But it's like whatever. <laughs> but I don't, I don't get a bit. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. The, the, the fact that they took uh, the time to put a few words in there makes me happy. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've said before on other podcasts that sometimes a bad review, especially when you're doing extreme horror, can be good for oh, you. Yeah. 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 Now, extreme horror, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, those those little one star reviews is what they want. <laughs> they <laughs> they uh, they're all the extreme people I know. They put that out there. And they, that's like a badge of honor. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how has the horror genre evolved over the years, in your opinion? How say it one more time. How has the horror genre evolved over the years? Oh. Um, well, uh, I mean, well, the uh, the evolution of the uh, extreme horror has been kind of interesting how that all happened. Um, but I, I do remember, though, it, it's kind of strange, though, for me, because when I started writing or when I started reading horror, it was Clyde Barker. And Clyde Barker at that time was very extreme. He's still some of his stuff is pretty extreme. Yeah. Um, but, <clears throat> you know, I was reading it and getting like, wow, these are just themes that I don't normally uh, hear about in horror. And, you know, it's just so cool to get that refreshing kind of different, you know, look at things, um, things that would probably be considered, you know, taboo that he was definitely exploring and working with. Um, and, you know, to, there were a lot of people that probably uh, a lot of the mainstream horror people that kind of put him down for that. <laughs> And technically, I think, you know, from what I understand, Clive Barker kind of uh, him and like Jack Ketchum and some of those guys, they kind of started the whole extreme uh, revolution after that. And they got it going. Yeah. Um, but um, probably what I've seen as far as an evolution goes, uh, it, it, the now it's like back then it was more like um, like you had one side of horror you had the underground horror which was like that and maybe maybe something like clive barker would come to the surface occasionally but most most usually it was underground um and you you had everybody kind of stayed up here you know with uh with king and coots and those guys um but i remember that being such a a different you know such a a spance there you know it's like it's like one was on one extreme one was on the other obviously it's mm -hmm. called extreme uh, what I've noticed lately uh, in the last, uh, you know, 10 years or so, really, that the way that everything's kind of merged together, 
<clears throat> and um, I, I think it's kind of going back the other way now. It's kind of because I know a lot of people are upset about the whole thing on TikTok and with the extreme video or the extreme authors and all that going on. So um, I think it's going back the way it used to be where the, the some horror is considered a little more palpable than that. Uh, but there for a while, I think it was just a mishmash of everything. And uh, I, I thought it was pretty refreshing at that point uh, that people were just, you know, whether it was extreme, whether it was not as extreme, they still loved it. Yeah, everybody loved it. It was just horror. Um, but I've noticed that the, the that evolution is kind of going away. Um, but that's probably the only bit. That's probably the biggest evolution I saw over time was that uh, that, sep- you know, that separation wasn't as separate anymore. It was together. Uh, and I liked it. I thought it was refreshing. Yeah, everything seems to be splitting off now into subgenres, don't yeah. they? Yeah, it does. It does. And I, I hate that because uh, I think a lot of uh, uh, people who uh, read horror um, aren't going to, they're not going to see, uh, they're not going to get as many recommendations for that. And they're, they're going to miss out on a lot of good books. And that's, that's what, you know, that, that was what, that's the only thing that was sad to me about all of it. Yeah. I suppose as well, there is some, um... A lot of authors are like cross writing, aren't they? Um, like they're going from, say, uh, what would what would be a good example? Like a normal horror with a bit of extreme on the side. Then you've mm-hmm. got something that's a little bit milder with splatterpunk vibes. So they mm-hmm. are going across the genres. Mm-hmm. I, I would like to uh, probably be that way. But I mean, I, I don't just it, the thing about extreme horror is I like extreme horror. I love to read it. But as far as writing it goes, it's hard. It's it's extreme. It's definitely extreme, but it's it's hard to write. <laughs> it really is hard for me to write. A lot of people just think it's like, oh, that's easy. Just write. But that's not as easy as you think it is. <laughs> it's not that easy. <laughs> Um, you got to be in a certain spot. I mean, you just got to be able to write it and you got to be like in your face about stuff. And I'm me personally, it's hard for me to do that. Um, I try Like I said, I try to make mine as creepy and scary as possible. And I, I don't shy away from the blood and anything like that. But uh, at the same time, it's kind of hard for me to go full extreme. Uh, maybe a little bit of a few extreme elements here and there, but I can't really go full. I love extreme horror, though. I love a, a lot of the people in it. They're great people. They are. They're a really friendly community. <laughs> oh, gosh, yeah. Well, some of my it's, best friends are good. Yeah, that. considering they're killing people off daily, they, they're the friendliest bunch of people you'll ever meet. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I've been to AuthorCon uh, this year, and I partied with a lot of them. Fantastic people. <laughs> had a great time. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any upcoming projects or releases that you're excited about? I'm pretty excited about Punish, uh, the one I've got coming out on uh, October 26th. Um, that one, I think, is going to be really, I think it's going to be well-received. And I'm already seeing people, uh, like I said, they're starting to get it, and they understand the way, the connections. Um, <clears throat> kind of a first time I've ever really I mean, I've done like sort of done dark fantasy, but this one's definitely more dark fantasy than uh, than I've done before, Um, because I really went with like the witch trope and uh, went, you know, a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, like historical references and uh, kind of things that I kind of um, I mean, I probably construe quite a bit, but I I still um, I take, you know, certain elements of history and kind of work them in there so that that's in there. I've done that with, I did that in Tent Revival too, though. But um, this one has a, um, but it definitely has more of a fantasy kind of, uh, I, th- I think, I think people who would read dark, would read darker fantasies would lo- really enjoy this one. Um, and I, th- I think this is, I honestly think it's going to be well received and I can't wait till it gets out and starts circulating a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and it's, I left it, you know, I mean, it's one of those that uh, I would, Personally, you know, I want as many stories about Harper Lansing, the main character, as I can. So uh, I think it's definitely a book that can go on and I can do a full series with it. That's good. I wish you all the best of luck with the release. Oh, I have a, I'm sorry, I have another, uh, I forgot about this one. I want to definitely mention this one. Uh, next year, I have a novel coming out by uh, D, from uh, D&T Publishers uh, in, I think it's in September of next year. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but it's called uh, Soul Mirror, and uh, it's uh, about <clears throat> a girl who is an occupational therapist 
and she um, she goes through a traumatic uh, situation where her husband is involved in a murder suicide uh, with his lover, and she witnesses the whole thing. Um, it happens right as she walks in the door. So um, it uh, she's dealing with all that trauma. Uh, she lost her baby, and she's dealing with all those things happening. Um, <clears throat> and uh, then she meets this girl with autism who um, can't speak but she is able to uh, speak a certain way, but only inside a mirror. So that, that all connects from there, but it's called soul mirror. And it's, it's a good, it's a great book. I mean, I was, uh, I put a lot into that one. So I really, I think really think that's going to be a, a very good book, um, but it's due out next year with the NT publishing. That's brilliant. That one sounds really intriguing. Interesting. I get a lot. I get a lot of people who say they they like it. I was like, yeah, I can't wait to get that one out. I think that's going to be a really good. One. <laughs> um, yep, I've got a convention coming up this weekend, uh, starting tomorrow. But it's it's in local. It's Huntington, West Virginia. So probably nobody in your uh, maybe might be a few people out there listening to this that would see it. <laughs> <laughs> but I wish you the best of luck with uh, both of the releases. They sound like fantastic books. Oh, thank you so much. So what advice would you give to aspiring horror writers? Um, Definitely just write and read. I mean, you know, just like Stephen King says, read a lot, write a lot. And like Bray Bray Bradbury says, like several, you know, authors from the past say that. But um, it's so, so, so important to read. Uh, Read as... um, Read read different genres, read subgenres, uh, read uh, like I was saying, you know, read extreme, read uh, folk horror, read whatever, you know. Just if it if it fan, you know if you think you'd like it, just read it. Well, don't don't even look at it from a point of whether you think you'd like it or not. Just read it. Uh, you you never know what you're going to find, and you never know what's going to inspire you. Um, but uh, definitely get uh, immersed in the culture as much as you can. Um, because you know, just like I said, ideas come from everywhere. Uh, you don't. I mean, if you have, if you definitely, if you have a, a dream that you think is going to be a really good one, you want to get you want to get that written down as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah, very true. <laughs> but read a lot, write a lot. That was that's really the best uh, formula for any uh, aspiring horror author. Yeah, and then if you have any good dreams, make sure you write ninety-one thousand words. Well. <laughs> exactly. Make sure you're at a 91k book from it. <laughs> <laughs> How long did that actually take you to do the 91,000 words? How long did it take me to write that? Yeah. Oh, I mean, the rough draft probably only took me a couple of months to pop that out. <clears throat> um, but the revisions obviously have been forever. I, I just every time I'll, I'll get jumping into it, and then, well, uh, I was working on revising it just about the time within I started coming up with that idea. So I went with that and I just kind of put that to, on the shelf for a while. And uh, I got that one out and then the idea for punish came out and I was like, well, I got to write that because that's part of the series and that'll work out good. So I just went in and wrote it <clears throat> and uh, had a few short stories uh, here and there, uh, different things. And um, then um uh, then I, I put, like I said, put it on the shelf again. Then I picked it back up. And now I'm working on it again. Yeah. So technically, the first rough draft was probably just a couple of months. Unbelievable. Mm. <laughs> it's, well, I mean, I don't know where, it, and it just started flowing. I mean, it was just like my fingers were just tapping as fast as they go. <laughs> I don't really even know where it all came from. <laughs> well, it's been a little bit. Yeah, so, and I mean, I had another too. I, oh, exactly. I mean, it's just, I don't know. Um, I, I mean, I'm always writing. So, I mean, you know, and, and whether I have a, a manuscript on, like I said, revision or whatever, sitting to the side, um, I'm always writing. So I've always got something, uh, whether it's a novel coming out or whether it's a short story, whether it's something, there's always something on there. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best way to be, though, isn't it? As soon as you've got an idea, quickly get it down before you forget yeah. it again. Absolutely. Yeah, I would uh, definitely think that is definitely the way to do it. Yep. Get it down as fast as possible. That's it. Well, thank you very much for being on the show. It's been wonderful having you here. Well, I greatly appreciate it. And uh, thank you for having me. And uh, I can't wait to hear this and share it and all kinds of fun stuff. (laughs) (laughs) 
now. And uh, be looking, yeah, be looking for punish October 26th. <laughs>